Hello, in today's landscape photography video, I'm going to go up the River Plym, which is up behind me, and try and do some landscape photography um, with a point to get some beautiful um, waterfall photographs. This tree behind me is particularly stunning. Um, it's a beautiful old oak tree that's been damaged at some point, and it's got um, four branches, and there's another beautiful oak to the right hand side. And these trees just arch over the River Plym here and they look really stunning, especially in their autumn colour. So I thought I'd take a photograph of the tree um, in particular, but also just having a bit of the, the River Plym in the background kind of helps to add to the scene as well. So there's a big rock down here and at the front of it, there's a trap log and that's just covered in moss and that looks really beautiful. So I've included that on the left-hand side of the frame and then this tree just arching over on the right-hand side. And I'm really hoping that those elements will all come together. Whenever I go out for a walk with the camera, I always bring a um, shower cap. Now, <laughs> clearly that's not for me, but I've put it on the camera because um, as per usual, it started to rain. But I did manage to get a quick photograph, or two, um, of the River Plym. Now we've got this beautiful composition here, where we've got these lovely moss-coloured rocks um, and some trees here. And there's, I think that's an oak, yeah, that's an oak tree. And then in the background, there's a beach. So you've got some lovely yellows and golds just arching over the river here. So I've taken two photographs, um, really just to, to give you a choice of which one you prefer. So the first photograph was taken at ISO 800, f5.6, and was, I think it's about 50th of a second. And what that did, that really just stopped the water in its tracks, so you can see all the detail in this water and you don't get any movement in the leaves or anything like that. Second photograph I took was ISO 100 F16 and I think it was about five or six seconds. And what that did was add a little bit of blur movement to the leaves but completely transform the water. Now I personally prefer the second photograph because moving water for me tends to be quite agitated and active and I don't think that really helps as a tranquil kind of photograph but if you put it on a long shutter speed and you just really blur it it tends to make it less active and more meandering so the water just flows around the rocks and it kind of takes away some of that tension from the image and I just find it's a lot more simple and relaxing so I prefer the, the second one with a longer exposure, but leave me a note in the comments which you prefer, because I do know a lot of people do not like long exposures on waterfalls. But each to their own, it's to everybody's taste, but it's just nice to know what you think. I've packed the camera away because it's started to pour down again, but I've spotted another opportunity and what I really like about this image is this little eddy down here. I don't mean my friend. Um, you've got a little, there's a couple of rocks and a big one this side, and you'll get in some water swirling around it. And so it's coming in from all angles, just dropping into this, um, a bit of a hole. So what I liked about that is that it's quite nice foreground interest, just so all the leading lines flow into this, this eddy from different locations on the river. So I've just taken a photograph perched precariously on these two rocks. Um, I was holding onto the tripod at all times because I didn't have confidence, um, so it wasn't too slippy. But I managed to get um, a panorama again because I don't have a wide angle lens, um, I had to do a panorama just so I can get the, turn it up into portrait and get right down here in the bottom, but also right up 
in the tree canopy. If you have kids, this is an absolute brilliant place to bring them. Um, especially this time of year in autumn when the, the, the leaves are changing colour. Um, you get all these, these little things, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, that is, this tree seed is actually an acorn and that bit at the top isn't a willy, it's actually um, a taproot, so it goes that way around. And what the kids can do is plant that in the ground and then in a couple of hundred years you'll have a beautiful stunning oak tree like that. Oh, <laughs> what a horrible day. Um, I found this really, really beautiful scene down there. Um, you've got this lovely oak tree there, which is split into two branches or two big trunks. And over the other side, there's another oak tree, which has got about five or six trunks to it. Um, and then you've got this really stunning rock formation in the water down there. Now, I don't know if it's possible to get down there um, without falling, but it looks, it looks a bit painful, so uh, I'm going to try not to fall this time. So I've got quite a nice vantage point from up here, looking down on the river above, so it gives a little bit more of a different perspective than being um, in line with the River Plym. So I took a landscape from there's this, this dead tree just here. Looks like an old maple or something like that. Um, and then there's another, another oak tree here, which is just moss covered, but this is a bit too close to the lens, so I don't think that'll work. So I've just taken a photo in between those two trees and trying to focus in really on the, the interest in the background. I managed to get down from the cliffs up there without falling, so I'm really proud of myself today. Uh, they're still young, but I wanted to come down because, I need to stop raining. Um, down there, there's like a circular rock formation. Well, not, it's not quite circular, it's more of a semi, but you've got like a semi-circular line of rocks in the river what I wanted to do is try and get in the middle of those so you've got water coming in from all directions but unfortunately it's really deep so I didn't go too far and the rocks are extremely slippy so I don't know if it's going to work I think I was more to the side than anything so I think it's the um, distortion of the lens is probably going to um, distort the water out so it looks a bit more squished out to the side and in the semicircle which is a shame but I think in the summer when there's a lot less water in here that would look quite impressive I took the photo anyway and just see how it goes but I have seen a really beautiful view looking that way uh, there's some amazing gnarly oak trees down there um, that are arching over the river and they've got some stunning colour on them but I don't know if I can get to them yet. Um, I'm gonna have to jump over rocks and things. There's a, there's a valley down here I'm gonna have to try and jump over. <laughs> Which is not good news. But we'll see. It's all a, all a bit of fun. Over there is a really stunning oak tree. Uh, it's just so many beautiful branches covered in moss. It looks really beautiful. It's just arching over the river. There's actually one branch that's dipping down into the river like a fisherman. Um, but the, it doesn't seem to have that many leaves on it, but the leaves in the background um, of the other oaks and beaches are really beautiful and orange. So, had to take another photograph of that it looks really nice um, so I've got this there's quite a big rock down there I don't know if you can see but I've got that right in the foreground so I've cropped it off quite um, close to the tree because really the tree is the main interest 
Uh, it does go over the River Plym, so the river is in this one, but I think really this photograph is more about the tree. So to take the photograph, I've used a um, about centi mil lens, something like that, 100 mil lens, to crop in as much as I could. Um, and then F11 to give me front to back depth of field. ISO 100 to give the least amount of noise and then whatever time that gave me. I didn't really record what time it was. Um, it's probably about 3.2 seconds, something like that. So that would have blurred the water a little bit um, to try and make the water a little bit less messy and a bit, a bit calmer. I found this really beautiful building out here in the woods. So I'm not really an expert on architecture, but I would date this building back to the 1970s because in those days, um, they started knocking the walls through to make more living space and make it really open plan. And it really does make sense in a beautiful surrounding like this to open the walls up because you get such an amazing view. It really does let the outside into the property. I've made it to the top of the waterfall now. Well, technically it's not the top, um, it's nowhere near, but um, I'm really tired and hungry, so I'm just gonna say it's the top. So we've got this really big, big by British standards, uh, waterfall behind. There's some huge boulders and a lot of white water. So I've taken a photograph of that um, in a landscape format. I wanted to get like a, a portrait of just this water coming down the middle, but I couldn't really get a good vantage point. So I did it in landscape and I've included this tree just to my left and then just going across, including all these oaks in the background. And then you've got some rhododendrons on the right hand side which offer some really bright green colour. There's a few rocks down here, there's a massive plunge pool down here which is just creating lots of foam, lots of white. I think that's quite a nice photo for my last image. So I'm going to head off now and uh, have a rest and get something to eat. So I really do hope you've enjoyed these videos. Um, this is such a stunning woodland and the River Plym is really beautiful down here. So if you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. And as ever, always leave me a comment. I love to read them. And I really do appreciate your support. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.